we're here at Black Hat 2010 with Miko Hipponen. He is uh, Chief Research Officer at F-Secure, and he just uh, got finished with a session um, called You Will Be Billed $90,000 for this call. And um, during the session, uh, he talked about an interesting attack. So Miko, will you um, kind of go over that attack for us? Yes, what we were looking at here was a Trojanized game game running on Windows mobile platform, so basically phones running the Windows operating system. And what happened here was that in March we started getting reports about Windows phones making co phone calls to mysterious places, including South Pole. And while we were investigating this, we realized that everybody who had the problem were running the same game on their phones. And the game was this shooting game called 3D Anti-Terrorist Action. And what turned out, what was going on here was that an, an unknown Russian hacker had taken this commercial game, cracked the game, removed the copy protection, uploaded the game on several Windows Mobile game download sites, and when people got the game from there, it actually started issuing phone calls to eight different numbers, including phone calls to Antarctica, to Somalia, to small island nations close to Africa, and to some satellite providers. And these numbers are so-called international premium rate numbers that work globally and will result in, in money transactions back to the person who owns the number. And this is done through a mechanism known as uh, short-circuiting or, or call truncating, which means the phone calls, for example, to South Pole never actually go to South Pole, or the calls to Somalia in Africa never actually go to Africa. But you pay the full amount of money anyway. And of course, calls to faraway places are very expensive. And these guys are using this mechanism to actually extract money out of these calls. And is this a legitimate um, mechanism, this phone? System. These international premium rate numbers have been around for quite a while and it seems to be more or less like a gray area. I mean, there are several companies selling numbers like this. But, for example, they're selling numbers in North Korea, in, in Sierra Leone, in Afghanistan. And I can't really imagine any real non-shady reason why somebody would like to buy a phone number from North Korea, which would actually give you money every time somebody actually dials the number. I'm sure there could be a perfectly legal explanation, but I just can't imagine one. And the attackers in this case exploited that? Yes, they had booked eight numbers in, in different countries and were using these Trojanized games to issue and place calls in those numbers, and they were getting daily payments whenever somebody called them. Wow, so um, have you seen this type of attack um, often, or, or is this the first time you've seen this? This is a new phenomenon. We saw these We've seen two games which do this. Both have been trojanized by the same Russian hacker. One is the shooting game and the other one is a poker game for, again, Windows Mobile phones. We have seen some earlier attempts, for example, in Russia um, with Russian Java-based mobile phone trojans, which sent text messages to Russian uh, premium rate numbers. But those have only been a problem within Russia because these numbers typically don't work around the world. In these new attacks that we've seen this year, they use these international numbers, which will work from anywhere in the world. And just talking um, mobile malware, mobile attacks in general, um, it, is this a, a big problem right now and do you um, expect it to become a bigger problem in the future? We've been researching mobile phone viruses for quite a while now. We saw the first one six years ago in 2004. Since then we've only seen little over 500 mobile phone trojans, worms and viruses and that's on all smartphone platforms. Most of these are for the Symbian smartphone platform. We have some examples on Windows Mobile, some examples on jailbroken iPhones and so on. But overall, the problem is still very, very small. And do you expect it to get worse? We do expect it to change eventually. But right now it seems that most of the money-making virus running gangs are just running viruses for Windows, specifically for Windows XP, which still has over 60% of the global market share of all operating systems. So why on earth would the virus writers even consider porting their attacks on any other platform if they don't have to? They'll only start looking at new platforms when the dominance of Windows XP will eventually end. Okay, Nico, thanks for going over this attack and the um, mobile threat landscape, and um, hope you have a good conference. Thank you very much.